Hello and welcome to Unit 2 of Week 3. In this week, I will present you the concepts of dominant operators and possible key reducers as a way of performance issue analysis. Finding dominant operators and possible key reducers can be a key to create a better plans and rewrite a query in better way. Here, we call the dominant operator is an operator that takes long to process the data. It usually generates a huge intermediate result, and reducing the result size of the dominant operator is a key to optimize the queries. And we define the possible key reducers as an ancestor operator of the dominant operator that could reduce the result generated by the dominant operator. If the plan does not have any key operators, then there is no possibility to benefit from reducing intermediate result. So now, let's find out how to find the dominant operator. When you collect the visualized plan using plan-based tool, the dominant operators are displayed in dominant operator section in plan -based. It shows the most expensive top three dominant operators, as you can see. These are top three dominant operators. In this example, each operator takes around 880 milliseconds, 637 milliseconds, and 110 milliseconds. You can also check how much percentage those operators occupied in the total execution time. But as I mentioned in the last session, to get the overview of a query structure, we usually look at the logical plan. Therefore, we don't have to look at these specific operators. It is important to check out the plan in column search level. And you can also click on any operator name to move to the corresponding visual light operator in the graph. So when you click the most expensive operator here, it directly goes to the corresponding part within the column search. So, you can easily check the dominant operator using plan-based feature. Here, we recommend you to look into the dominant operators in column search level. And as another way, you can reach to the most dominant operators along highlighted line in the orange color like this. This is column such a level overview. So we can get to know the analytical search contains the dominant operator. You can also find the dominant operators by comparing the time consumed to process the operator in column such a level. As you can see, the most time consumed column search is analytical search which has 1,637 milliseconds as exclusive time. Therefore, we could know that this column search contains the dominant operator. When you recall the definition of inclusive time and exclusive time in PlanVis, inclusive time is the time taken to execute the complete operation, including the time of the children operators and com excluding compilation time. And inclusive time is the time taken to execute a single operation. Most of the case, we are checking at exclusive time in order to check the time for the execution of one single operation. Let's check out the result size of each column search. From the last slide, we know that the analytical column search contains the dominant operator because it has the longest exclusive time and the highlighted orange line indicates it. So we now know the dominant operator and we can find the possible key reducer. From the last slide, we define the possible key reducers as an ancestor operator of the dominant operator that could reduce the result from the dominant operator. Since the records from the dominant operator is reduced from the most top column search, 
the possible key reducer could be this column search. Okay, then now let's check out the logical inner plan for each column search and find the dominant operator and possible key reducer within this column search. The logical plan gives you the big picture and overview of the plan. Therefore, it will be very useful to understand the query optimizer tree and structural information. To see the logical plan, you can just click the column search and choose Open Inner Plan and select Logical. Then, you will see those following logical inner plan. We name the column searches as Column Search 1, Column Search 2, and Column Search 3. When we look at the Column Search 1's logical inner plan, the base table T1 is ordered by T1.A in ascending order. After that, limit operation is applied and it generates 20 rows. When you check the column search 2's logical inner plan, there is inner join between column table T2 and T3. After the join is processed, there is aggregations group by is applied. And in column search 3, there is left outer join between these two column search, column search 1 and column search 2. After this join, the result is ordered by, and finally, 20 rows are returned. So with this logical plan, let's find out the dominant operator and possible key reducer. In this example, the dominant operator is column search 2. When you recall the concept of the column search from the last week's session, when a column search is split into multiple ones, we call this as a stacked column search. And we learned that the column search processes the natively supported operators in predefined order, which is table, join, group by, and order by. With this knowledge, let's find out the dominant operator. The aggregation operators is located at the top in column search 2, and this makes the stacked column search in this plan. Therefore, one single column search is not made, taking long time to process the column search 2. And we can call the aggregation operator as dominant operator. Now, let's find out the possible key reducer. We define the possible key reducers is usually an ancestor operator of the dominant operator that could reduce the result from the dominant operator. Therefore, the possible key reducer in this example, it can be this join. Since the generated records are extremely reduced after this join. If there is no operator that can reduce the result, then the query should be rewritten. So we found the dominant operators and possible key reducer. Then we can think about the proper SQL hint to make the query performance better. If the possible key reducer is pushed down, then the intermediate result can be reduced. Here, we can think about the SQL hint join through aggregation. However, hints may not lead you to the desired plan because it is logically impossible to move operators or a different plan than what you want to make is chosen by cost. When it says logically impossible, it means when the optimizer expects the result after they move the operator, there can be a case to return the different query result. Therefore, the optimizer does not allow to move the operator. So when the hint does not work, we can think about the different query result can be made. And you can verify this by simulating and testing the query. We'll look into mold in details in case study 2. 
Regarding point two, a different plan can be made by cost. I will give you an example. Let's assume you want to push down the aggregation. But when the aggregation is pushed down, it can be go to either left hand side or right hand side of the joint. This decision is chosen by cost. Therefore, the generated plan can be different from what you expect. If the hint does not move possible key register, then rewriting should be considered to locate the key operators before dominant operator. That was the end of the unit 2 of week 3. In the coming unit, we'll talk about the techniques using dominant operators and possible key registers. Thank you for your attention. See you.